Dutch represent all my island people say We people celebrating all it from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical Straight from the crew Previously on Delos, we celebrate Kaz's birthday with a treasure hunt and some fresh sushi. And get close to nature at the incredible Ilha Cuves. Oh Holy God. shit! Are you kidding me? You landed right on this. This weekend, there is a regatta. So we're headed back to Saco de Ribera in Ubatuba, and we are going to join the regatta. You guys ready to go? Uh-huh. Hey man, who's that coming out of the hatch with the camera? Huh? Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Yes. Okay, pick them up, Hook. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be epic. It's gonna be a lot of crazy Brazilians and no wind. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So the regatta is called uh, El and Ela, which means his and hers. And the whole point of the regatta is every boat is supposed to have the equal amount of men and women on board. So for the boats that have an underneath even amount, the guys have to dress like girls and the girls have to, have to dress like guys. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily we have one extra girl, but Arthur's gonna come with us. The same dude we've been hanging out with. Uh, the past couple weeks and it'll even it out so none of us need to dress up like anything but maybe we should anyways since we have an even crew maybe we should just all the boys dress up like girls and all the girls dress up like boys yeah anyways. i think that would be fun though <laughs> are you guys gonna dress like boys are you gonna dress like a girl you dress like boys yeah i think that would be fun you have a dress that'll fit me i'm dying to put that dress on of yours so and i'm pretty sure we're gonna tie up to a dock we haven't tied up to a dock since cape town so we're gonna tie up to the dock because we've got a week free for being international sailors joining the regatta on Saturday. That's how rare it is to have international sailors in this part of Brazil is that they want to give us a week for free at the marina because we want to join their little racing club. You guys want to drive? So I can lay down in the sun? It's been about six months of solid cruising since we left the city of Cape Town, South Africa. We always talk about balance being the key to everything, and at this point, we are craving a bit of civilization. Well, we may be in luck, because there are talks amongst the crew about leaving Delos at the dock, after the regatta, and heading to experience the big city of Sao Paulo for a few days. Get some lipstick smacked on you? Yeah, there's just not gonna be much wind tomorrow. It's gonna be like this, so. I don't know, it's gonna be really fun zooming around in the dinghy and, and partying and drinking and then after the, after the regatta, I think the whole reason people do it is because there's a massive party at the Yacht Club. Felipe said we got kicked out of our dock space. Cause, oh, shame. Because we more leave? legitimate boats for the regatta are shipping up. More legitimate boats? You know, boats that are actually racing. Hey, well, I mean, we're racing, but we're in like the tourism class and we're the only boat in the tourism class. <laughs> <laughs> so we might win that class. We're going to win. Um, Hello. I'm filming him yeah. and he's filming me. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go in here and attempt to use our awesome Portuguese skills yeah. to contact the Ayate Clube and take it from there. We have a mooring apparently. We don't know where we're going. Lisa's busted at the binos. I have no idea what I'm looking for, but I'm <laughs> Ah. What do you see, Lisa? Yeah, I'm to avoid us. Uh, boats and naked people and more boats and <laughs> Brazilian flags and Brazilian bikinis. And <laughs> so turn around? Yeah, turn around. So we're following that little guy there. 
and I think he's gonna kind of guide us to a mooring that we're gonna be on so we'll see <laughs> it's a lot of boats and a lot of people around we're out here in the boonies in the, the furthest they put down. us out by this boat <laughs> oh shame this is our new neighbor <laughs> true Dell style Got it. I like how we went from a spot in the marina to like the, <laughs> the furthest out dodgiest anchoring or not. No, we didn't have to anchor. At least we got a mooring spot. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I think this is perfect for us. I like anchoring. Yeah. I trust our anchor. Yeah, true. Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. <laughs> Exciting. We're getting the dodger down. Going into mode. Race mode. Mode, also known as race mode. <laughs> Regatta mode. It's really cool. I love this part about Delos. So you can turn it into a convertible. What's up, Bray? It's time. We're getting Delos all trimmed up. It'll give us that extra point zero 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 one knot. <laughs> it will then lose by towing the thing. <laughs> I'm excited. I thought I was going to be hungover, but I feel like a champ today. <laughs> Are you ready to put on a bikini? Nice. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm ready for lipstick, eyeliner, and a bikini. Okay. And I'm ready to go sail around in no wind and fog. We don't race Delos very often. She races like a 22 ton bus and really needs a solid 15 or 20 knots to get going. But wind or no wind, we were ready. Delos was in race mode and we even had some extra crew on board. So did Felipe show you the course or? No. No. But I have an idea. That idea Brian was talking about came from using Google Translate the night before to try and figure out the race rules. I think we go that way into the fog. Okay. And then we go through that gap in Anchetta Island, uh -huh. the one that we've gone through yeah, before. Yeah. And then we go around an island, a small island, just inside of Anchetta, keep that island to starboard, and then. We come back downwind, <laughs> I think. And this starts somewhere over there at about 12. It's very informal. Yeah. And what about our official regatta attire? Blue is on it. Okay, some bikini tops here for the boys. Okay, how does this thing work? Okay. How's that, Brady? <laughs> Feels pretty good. I see why you guys wear them. I feel like I'm ready. <laughs> A lot of support. <laughs> Why do you think this is perfect for me? <laughs> <laughs> like this? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Is it nice now? Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> can oh, try. It's so good. <laughs> I think they're checking you out there. Oh, no, it's my leg. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Sucks. You're going to need to loosen the top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I want to stuff my bra. <laughs> You've already got some Trasco weight going in these titties. <laughs> you're, already, you're already a natural A cup, my boy. Brazil has been good to me. Yeah, it's got proper boots on. Nice. Pretty good. I can see your, oh, man. I can see your ball ball throw. Yeah. That's so disturbing. I don't like it. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girls can't pee standing up. <laughs> this one can. Wow, Lisa. Just saying. Some package are going on there. Man, here, yeah, look at your package. Your package I think is yours. Bigger than mine, though. I'll say mine is quite perky. Aren't there? Are you sure? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm ready. I feel like we're going to win. Because we're the only ones against ourselves, so we can only win. If it were based on looks, we'd win for sure, huh? Oh, we already won that game. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. And... Turn off. <laughs> run free! <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I think we got a little too into our characters. We'll get back to the sailing now. 
It turns out we were the only boat in the entire regatta to actually dress up. And even though we had super light winds, we were having a hell of a time. We were like literally the only boat, the only dressed, boat dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else got the level of the dress up race. <laughs> 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 we just put out the pole and set the sails for downwind and now the wind came around to the front and now we're going backwards. The old mizzen ballooner. Give us another eighth of a knot, baby. <laughs> yeah, the sails are doing this right now. There is no wind, like zero to five knots, so all these boats around here are just dropping out. Like most of the boats now are going for either the beach over here, or these boats are turning around and motoring. There was another boat that just motored past us. <laughs> one, everyone is holding strong, and then once one boat turns... Yeah, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. I figure if we can be the, the last to give up, then that means we're in first place. <laughs> We've only got two boats in front of us now. The last two left. <laughs> the last two left. <laughs> Well, what do you think, bro? We're out of wind. <laughs> I say we call it. We go back and we eat the shadow and drink beer. If we keep going, <laughs> if we keep going, we're gonna miss the beginning of the whole party with the feijoada and the samba and all the yeah. The whole reason you do it out of the first place. So. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's we so, have the finish line is right there. The islands. We did good. Whatever. Yeah, what do you think, Captain? Mm -hmm. Calling it? Yeah, let's call it. <laughs> we'll just zoom back. <laughs> so we're back at the our little spot again, at the buoy. And it was a beautiful day. And I think, I don't know, it's maybe like five or something. And we're going to jump in the dinghy. And then we're on our way in for the delicious dinner and free beers. for the after party. South American cultures have always had a special place in my heart, and Brazil has now become one of my favorite countries, especially for the food. The local dish around this part of Brazil is called feijoada. It's a delicious mix of black beans, off cuts of pork, beef sausage, onions, garlic, and spices, all cooked in a traditional clay pot. You put this goodness over some white rice and top it off with farofa, a toasted cassava flour mixed with onions and garlic, similar to breadcrumbs. Then you put some salad and fried plantains in the side, and you've got a South American flavor blast. Okay, you can have that part ready. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's good. The greatest surprise of the night, though. I found out there's free caponinas. Uh oh. Come on. You know, we couldn't show up to a party empty handed. It was time to bust out the Delos moonshine. That one, that one is uh, vodka. Maybe 
little uh, late rising this morning, but we finally got everybody out of bed. <laughs> Having a little bit of a rough morning. And we're doing something we don't do very often. We're moving Delos to a marina. So we're gonna leave the boat. We are heading towards Sao Paulo because we met the, a guy who invited us, Arthur, uh, to come and stay with him and to check out the, the city for a little while. It's gonna be cool, man. It's a, it's a huge city. It's probably one of the biggest cities I've ever been to. Yeah, me or too. any of us, right? I think it's like the fifth largest city in the world. There's something like over 20 million people that live there. So it's gonna be a shock to go from our little quaint anchorages with no people around here to a, a city of 20 million. I think it's gonna be epic, but also a bit hectic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sao Paulo, here we come. So I like to shut off the, the main through hole in the boat, there's actually only one, so it's real easy to completely shut off any sort of water that could potentially get in if like a hose breaks or something happens, so just a little safety. Lock her up! Bye bye Delos! We have finally gotten all our shit together. I feel like we're always traveling with so much stuff. Let the adventure begin! Oh shit man, we're already lost. Los gringos vamos a zapar. Gringos vamos. After a five hour drive in an overpacked car, we started to finally make our way into the city. I think it's cool to balance out the other side of all the islands and stuff to see everyone that leaves this area every weekend and goes to Ubatuba or goes sailing. Or It's cool to see the other side. It's fair to say that after our ocean crossing and time spent out at the islands, all of us were pretty overwhelmed by the hecticness of a big city. And rightfully so, Sao Paulo's nickname is actually the Concrete Jungle, and it has the third largest concentration of skyscrapers in the world behind New York and Hong Kong. It also has the largest number of helicopters, with about 2,000 flights a day for the wealthy to avoid the gridlock traffic. People born in the state are nicknamed Paulistas and reflect a wide variety of ethnic backgrounds, including Portuguese, Italian, African, Arabian, and even Japanese. We were definitely experiencing sensory overload the entire week we spent in Sao Paulo. And after looking through almost 200 gigabytes of footage, it seemed like the best way to share what the city meant to us was through our senses. so cool to be like in a big city like this and you just walk around look at all the things and it's so many different sounds that we're so not used to and it's a lot of people and a lot yeah. of cars everywhere it's awesome and, they have, of course, and we're gonna right? try to go to like the biggest park and um, I think it's like a 30 minute walk so it should be good I'm excited to see like the green trees and then just the skyscrapers in the background I think it will be good it was only natural for us to gravitate towards the closest park and after strolling around for a bit, we followed our ears towards some loud live music, which turned out to be a bateria. How special of a life. 
to be able to live upon the ocean. To control the noise of our days. And to let nature be the soundtrack of our life. Mercado Municipal in the middle of Sao Paulo and it's massive. I know it's the biggest market in Sao Paulo and anything you could ever think of, spices and meats and bacon and cheeses. I saw like a 50 kilo thing of tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like too. There's yeah. so many smells in here. If only we had like Delos nearby, we could load her up I all know, this I goodness. Saw. They have everything in this place. I'm so excited to start trying a bunch of things that we don't know what it is. <laughs> There's so much meat here. This is just a bunch of dried fish. Like, I didn't even know you could do that with fish. <laughs> it's dried and like, it's kind of soft as well. Wow, that's so weird. So strange. There should be a lot of salted meat, I think. There's a lot of meat. And it's all salted, so it's all just unrefrigerated, but it's salted. We've seen stuff like this in Madagascar, but it was hanging and it was like flies and rotting in the sun. And here it's just salted, so it's cured. What do you think about all these spice options? They're blue. Well, I got some dried mango, and then I saw a dried kiwi, and I've never had dried kiwi before, so. They're good. Your face is doing crazy things. Whoa. What is it? It's like. <laughs> hey, right, I know that. <laughs> It's like saucy, but sweet. Yeah, it has like a different aftertaste, huh? Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Okay, so this is shop. Yeah. Shop? Shope. Shope. Shope, which is just, it just means draft. So draft beer, shope. And here in Brazil, they do it really cool. They wait until you're like right here, and this guy is walking around with a tray, and he just sets it down next to you, and then marks on your thing. How many beers? How you many have? beers you had? So you don't have to order them; they just kind of show just up sort right of here. Oh, uh, what happened, brother? I got snuck in, man. I'm not even done yet. I had I had this on top, and I put it to the side, and I had a drink for like three seconds. When I put it down, and I was talking, and he zoomed in and dropped another one. <laughs> They're crazy. Uh, what do I do? I can't cover both. <laughs> That's how they get you, brother. Wow. that we're at right now is called Beko de Batman and it all started back in the 1980s when somebody drew Batman on one of the walls of this alley. It's an alley where like three different walkways come together and somebody painted a graffiti of, of Batman and then it got the name the alley of Batman and then ever since then like art students have came in and done done art and different graffiti and then after that international artists would come in and do graffiti and the cool thing is it's like a it's like an open air museum of art because it's constantly changing so like if somebody wants to come and do a new piece like if there's an old piece from the 90s or 80s that's wearing away they'll contact the artist and get permission hey we want to do this over your piece is that okay so it's constantly like evolving once once things get old and kind of worn away and there's like crazy street art all over the city huh yeah that's the thing it's not even i mean this alley is like the main major tourist area like it's really well known because it got famous but everywhere you look there's street art like everywhere especially in this area was it Villa Medilla? Madalena. Madalena. Villa Medellina. Arturo was telling us that some of the government doesn't really like it so much with the actual graffiti and there's a lot of that too on a lot of the buildings and stuff driving through the city like 
it doesn't look so nice. There's old buildings that are just kind of dilapidated and sprayed all over, but this stuff where people are actually creating art, it's, I don't know, it definitely adds a lot of flavor to the city and makes it unique and makes it special and I think it's a good way for people to channel energy, for sure. Next is the philosophical study of beauty and art. Although it may appear that art implies the idea of beauty, a little introspection reveals that they are in fact very different things. Viva São Paulo! Viva São Paulo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for Dallas again for sure. <laughs> so where are we going? Our so hurting! We're going to Sailing Guarapiranga. Sailing Guarapiranga? Yeah, it's a, a big lake we have here and it's uh, 40 minutes. So it's close and it's in the city. There's still São Paulo over there but it's just on the other side. So we're gonna drive 40 minutes and it's nice, beautiful, and good. Cool, what like it. awesome. What yeah. are the boats? Nice, beautiful, and good. Uh, Flash like 165. It's <laughs> <laughs> like nice, beautiful, and good. <laughs> The thing we did is the check it. There's no wind today. But we got beers. <laughs> water, clearly, well, crazy. More like fresh water floating around. This could be a little liveaboard, huh? A 17 flavor. Yeah, I think that's. Look at how cute the furler is. I know. Look at this back. Yeah, it's so like cute. Cute little stays. Cutest. Cute little stays. Look at all. The sheets, yeah, they're like all of their cute little blocks. Oh, <laughs> precious. Precious. Cool, this one has a swing <laughs> heel or something. Yeah, it's <laughs> so cool, man. It's like, ah, it's like a, it's like a little toy dinghy. Ah, oh, Dallas 2.0 will have one of these, bro. Mm -hmm. Cool, unfortunately we don't have that much wind. Uh, I think we have about one to three knots. <laughs> but the boat is pretty small. And when you step on it, it's really responsive. <laughs> Woo! Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, come on. Have fun. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Everything's so easy. Brian is walking up. <laughs> Hello, don't miss the ride. <laughs> And it's quite weird because you can't see where the wind is coming from, so you kind of just have you can to. Feel it though. Yeah. Blues in her zone. You. Give me a trim, Lisa. Nice. <laughs> oh, you got him! You got him! Now. <laughs> Have you guys been eating too many coxinas or what? Manera na coxinha! 
cocina. <laughs> cool, look at the city coming around the corner. It's awesome. It's epic, man. It's hard to believe that there's a city of like 20 million people over there. Right? And there's only like three boats sailing around on this lake. Yeah, but imagine on a weekend, it's huh? It's probably crazy. Ooh. Why do you think those guys are so far back there? They're a bunch of panties. And they're all high, like a We've been trimming sails while they've been smoking joints. <laughs> Girl crew. Girl crew. And me. Girl <laughs> crew. Oh, shit. Getting out on the water after a week in the city was literally a breath of fresh air. No doubt about it, there's something pretty magical about feeling the wind in your hands and the sun on your skin. Add a few wild Brazilians to the mix and you know you're in for a good time. Nice sunset. Even on these little flashes on a tiny lake with barely any wind, we still had the biggest smiles on our faces and continued to sail until the sunset. Oh man, you're doing it all wrong. Okay, go up with There you go. Look at that maneuver. Lose the main sheet, main sheet, main sheet. Okay, okay, okay. Main sheet, main sheet, main sheet. Okay. Alright. There you go. Crash maneuver. That's good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Did you guys have fun? Such yeah. a cool day, man. You got boarded by a pirate. You got boarded by a pirate? Oh, we got boarded by a pirate. Yeah, we did, by Elisa. Elisa boarded us. It's so cool Sometimes sailing a small happens, boat like you know. that, man. It's so incredible, just the feeling of... Dallas is just like a bus, you know? <laughs> it's so heavy, and you're like, oh! And like this covered thing, but... With the tiller and the sheets, it's really cool. Well, we got in just in time for the sun to go down, which is nice. It's just really cool to kind of sail around on a small boat like that, which is something that I've never done before. This is how you learn how to sail, I feel like. I mean, I I know Dallas and stuff, but this is so responsive and anything you pull or when you do the, you know, rudder, it's like super cool to feel the boat moving. It's like so quickly but it's been a really awesome day and it's really cool to be sailing in St. Paulo like something that I never thought I was gonna do <laughs> and like skyline in the background so it's awesome it's a really good day I'm ready city to go home. So I love the city, but man, I feel, really feel like getting back to the beaches and the water and a little bit of chill lifestyle, you know? Yeah. But it was city such an awesome experience. I'm so glad we did this. So nice of Arthur to let us stay at his place and stuff as well. Like, he's such a <laughs> cool friend and like, I don't know, just to meet locals and to hang out and stuff, it means so much. And he showed us a really, really good time. And yeah, I'm just really happy he's our friend. It's been an epic, epic week. <laughs> but like Brian said, I'm also very stoked to get back to Dallas and kind of rewind a little bit. Oh, We're still here, that's a good sign. Welcome back, guys. Start floating home. Everything's okay downstairs. Oh, is that such a distinctive smell? She's leaving her locked up for a week. Now it's time to relax, I think. Home sweet home. Well, we made it back to Delos and we spent the day scrubbing on the deck where we could hook up to the hose at the marina. We did a huge provision, which was really good. And now we're still just waiting for Brian to get back from the port authorities, but he's on his way. Um, but our free time at the marina is up, so we are heading back to Flamingo around the corner. It's time to rest back up, <laughs> recuperate from city life. I'm definitely ready to be at anchor, just to feeling the wind on your face and being on the water feels so good. Are you glad to be back on Delos? 
That was a hectic week. It was. the ocean again. You have to be back, Kaza. <laughs> Take that <laughs> as a yes. So yeah. <laughs> Next up on Delos, we sail out of Ubatuba and explore the only fjord on the coast of Brazil. Like this? Yeah. I feel like a lesbian right now. <laughs> hey, you got a bigger penis than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Was that one minute? One minute. Oh shit. The piece is it keeps tree changing. or is it something that keeps on pissing on me? Look at what that. What is that from? The tree or somebody is pissing on me. Oh, it's a Spanish. Spanish. Fuck! You're so bad. They're in an awful lot. Trash. <laughs> it's balls. What? <laughs> Repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That Out of all my defining traits, you like the <laughs> my balls the best? I'm just kidding. <laughs> she looks like a crazy woman. Who is that I spot? Merging out from the forest of the jungle. It's a laser. A rare species of Austrian descent. Everything's so clean. It's like amazingly clean. And I was in the toilet and uh, there's like four guys cleaning the toilet right there. And I'm like trying to pee and there's a guy like, he's like, hey man. <laughs> Dude, what happened to your bachelor pad, Arturo? What's that? Destroyed! <laughs> this place is destroyed, <laughs> man. Delos invaded. Holy, Delos invaded. This place was so clean when they got here, now it's <laughs> you, you are beautiful like an elf. <laughs> Like what? an elf? <laughs> no, maybe you've been watching some uh, Lord of the Rings lately, huh? You're <laughs> 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 going to die! <laughs>
Say, <laughs> 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 <laughs>